prayed. Amen. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Can you stand up? Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Hallelujah. He is a good God. We love him so very much. Amen. We're going to sing a couple of songs this morning, but we do want to say happy uh, July 4th weekend. Amen. How many is thankful for your freedom that we still have, that we can come out and we can worship the Lord? Amen. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I love the Lord, and I'm not going to take it back. Amen. In Jesus' name. freedoms that we have in America today. 
And uh, we're thankful that God is with us no matter what is going on. Our nation, our world is in a turmoil. It's in an uproar. But how many knows that God is greater? He's greater than every virus. He's greater than any problem that you have. He's greater than any problem that this nation has. And we still know that if we will turn our faces to him, the Bible says that my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray that we will see him heal our land. Amen. And he is greater this morning than anything. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you this morning, Lord. Keeper of the day and the night, holder of the sun and the skies, Lord, you command the waters and the wind. There's not one thing you're not greater than. Sing it out.
let's raise our hands. Father, we thank you this morning. God, we refuse. God, we refuse to let the, the spirit of the age. We refuse to let the, the Antichrist spirit. We refuse to let oppression and depression, God, grab a hold of our life. We refuse to let the, the times that we're living in. We refuse, God, that spirit to let it attach to our lives, God. And bring us down and drag us down and come against our minds, God. Because we are the children of God. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We are on the winning side. God, we are on the winning side. So, God, we bind the spirit of the age of what's going on right now. God, we don't allow it to attach itself to our spirit. So, God, I ask you right now, the Lord, that we be free of anything that's trying to drag us down. We, we be free, God, from anything of the past that's trying to drag us down. Anything that we're looking at in our life right now that's trying to drag us down. Any circumstance that's trying to weigh upon us, God, because of everything that's going on in our world, we don't have, God, to let it. We don't have to let it yes. attach to our spirit. And so this morning, God, we stand in your house. And we refuse to let that spirit get a hold of us. We refuse to let that spirit of doubt, unbelief, and fear. We are seated, God, with you in heavenly places. So, God, right now, we take authority over that spirit. We're going to walk in power, we're going to walk in love, and we're going to walk yes, in sound mind right now. So, Father, we pray for our families right now. God, we're asking you to protect every member of our family. We're asking you, Lord, to touch every member of this church. God, we're asking you, anyone that attends this church, that, God, your hand will be upon them. Your hand will be upon their children of protection. Your hand will be upon their grandchildren. And God, your hand would be upon their family. We're asking for protection for our church right now. And those watching by television, God, we're asking you to reach out. And God, that you will touch their life. And God, you'll bring protection to them. Because we are children of the Most High God. And so God, we claim that right now. And you are greater than anything that we're facing in our life right now. So, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand this morning. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord? How many of you know we're going to get through this? We're on the winning side. And how many of you know you have to fight off the spirit that's trying to attack you in the age and time that we're living in that wants to drag us down? But I refuse to let the enemy have control over our lives and over our family. And I believe America, God can still save America. How many of you believe that? This 4th of July, I still believe there's hope. For the United States of America, because we serve a big, uh, big God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We just got a few announcements this morning. Uh, before Christina comes up, she has an announcement. I'd like to thank everyone once again for your uh, giving to the church. God is blessing our church. And I want to let everyone know that is watching also by video from the church that we are uh, giving to help. Uh, other people during this time. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we did our uh, outreach and raised $2,000, and we were able to give away uh, groceries and things like that to families in our community. 
Uh, and we've also been reaching out and helping other uh, families and other people going through difficulties uh, in their uh, life. I want to uh, pray over your finances right now. So just stretch your hands this way. And how many of you know during this time that God said that if you'll give, he'll still bless you? How many of you, during this time of whatever's going on, that God still can financially bless you uh, if you will, if you'll give? Maybe you're here and you're not able to give. Uh, maybe you're watching by video and you're not able to give, but I still want to pray a blessing over your life, just like, uh, just like Abraham did over, uh, over Israel. Let's raise our hands and pray over our finances. Father, you know everything that's going on in our finances right now. You know where we are financially. And God, you know where the church is financially. Father, we thank you for everyone, uh, God, that are sowing into this ministry. So God, just like Abraham blessed the children of Israel, God, I am asking you, Lord, to bless our finances beyond anything we could dream, think, or imagine. God, I ask you, Lord, to pour your blessings out during this time that we're living in. God, ones that are here that are here this morning or by television that need a job. God, I'm believing, God, that you're going to give them a job right in the middle of this. And God, you're going to pour your blessings out. So God, I ask you to bless them. And God, that you bless them indeed. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many are ready to get in the Word of God? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's been another, another week as we look and see everything that's going on in the world. We still know and believe that God is uh, still on the throne. Amen? Uh, just for the next few minutes, uh, I want to talk about uh, the picture of what it looks like to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. What it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter uh, 1, verse 17 and 18, it says this, Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you, or you'll become devoted to, fishers of men. They immediately, the Bible says, left their nets to follow Jesus, or one translation says, to forsake all. So what does it mean to truly be a, a disciple of Jesus Christ? Not someone that just follows Jesus Christ from a, a distance. Uh, as you study in the New Testament, you'll see many that follow Jesus from a distance. And we have people uh, today, that the day that we're living in, they're, they're following Jesus for just the loaves and the fish. But are they truly disciples of Jesus Christ? John chapter 8 and verse 31 says it like this. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. So if you're taking notes this morning, I'm going to give you three quick things that will let you know that you are truly a disciple of Jesus Christ. The first one is, a disciple feeds on the Holy Scriptures. A disciple, a true disciple feeds on the Holy Scriptures. They read their Bible. They study the Word. It's nothing like studying the Word of God. It's nothing like feeding on the Word of God. In, in the time that we're living in, I wanted to encourage you to feed more on the Word of God. How many of you know that we need the Word of God more now than ever in our life? We need to be truly feeding on the Word of God. A true disciple feeds on the Word of God. It's hard to be led by the Spirit if you're feeding on horoscopes, a news report, Facebook every minute, if you're feeding on YouTube, uh, feeding on your iPhone, and I put one place, the gossip line. Jesus says, if you abide in 
my word. Not if you abide in all of these other things or you listen to all these other things or you read all of these other things, but if you'll spend time in my word, if you'll abide in my word, you truly is a mark of you being my uh, disciple. If you abide, if you stay in, if you are connected to, if you feed on, if you do not depart from the Word of God, you are my uh, disciple. It's, it's like some of us, we feed on Fox News. Uh, we got the Fox News on our television. We get in the car, we got Fox News. We read, uh, we wear Fox News pajamas. We got Fox News socks. We got Fox News headbands. You know, some people are truly a disciple of the Republican Party. Or are they truly a disciple of the Democrat Party? And they're possessed with the political or Democratic Party when we truly are should be a disciple of Jesus Christ. What's Jesus Christ say? about what's going on now. What does the Word of God say about racism? What does the Word of God say about everything that's filtering on our new system? I want to know what God is saying. Uh, Thank God for the news, but I got to know what God is saying for my individual life. Lord, what are you saying about my individual life? What are you saying about the things are to come? What are you saying uh, in the book of Daniel? What are you saying in the book of Revelations that is unfolding now? God, what are you saying? How should I be living now? I want to be feeding on your word so I can be ready when you come. I don't need to be fighting and arguing and fussing about the election coming up. I need to be feeding on the living word of God. Things like that doesn't give me life, Pastor John. The word of God gives me life. The word of God encourages me. The word of God, when I feed on the word of God, I'm feeding, the Bible says, on the living word. Come on, I'm feed, when I feed on the Word of God, the Bible says I'm feeding on the living Word. I'm feeding, feeding on something that is giving me life. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 says this, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. We just don't need to read the Word of God. We need to be obeying. The Word of God. It's one thing to read and study the Word of God. It's another thing to be obedient to the Word of God. How many of you like me have read the Word of God before? And, you know, I'm really not crazy about what it's saying about my situation because I think that I can figure it out and make it come out better. So I kind of like do it myself. Or God speaks to me. And I decide, you know what, maybe I can do that down the road. Realizing that I'm being disobedient to God. It's one thing to feed on the Word, but it's another thing to be obedient to the Word. The Word of God was given to us to live by, also for us to have a life of obedience. The Word of God always points you to a life of obedience. Most Christians are educated beyond their level of obedience. We become spiritually obese. We are fat in knowing the Word of God. Nothing right, wrong with having a lot of Bible studies. We all need to be studying the Word of God. It's nothing wrong with reading the Word of God an hour a day. We should be studying and reading it. But it's okay to have all of that knowledge of the Word of God, but it does you and I no good if we're not obeying the Word 
of God. A disciple of Jesus does not look at the word as just a sword to cut the enemy down. Or sow a seed just to bear fruit. Or a hammer to crush the enemy's head. Or just get more education so they can debate the Bible. Or try to manipulate God in some type of wish list. A true disciple of Jesus is called to a life of, listen, obedience and surrender. When I study the Word of God, it takes me back to a life of, I'm going to obey you, God. And I'm going to surrender to what you're saying, God. Whatever it is, is that not the life of the cross? Once again, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 says, For he was the son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he what? He suffered. The word of God is like a, it's like a text message to you and I. Do you know how we actually text God back? Through obeying his word. The Word of God is like a, a text message or an email sent to us. And how we respond back to that text message or that email is through a life of obedience and surrender to God. Now, how many of you know a life of obedience and surrender is really not a lot of fun? You know, when my mom and dad told me to, to do something uh, and I didn't really want to do it, uh, I paid a little bit of a price. Well, actually, I paid a big price for being disobedient. The Word of God is set up for our life to be a life of, listen, a life of surrender and a life of obedience. How many of you know that that goes against our flesh? How many of you know that goes against our will of what we want to do? In the way we want to do it. The life of surrender and a life of obedience. See, we've got a lot of, a lot of sermons on how I can get rich. We've got a lot of sermons on how I can feel good. We've got a lot of sermons on things like that. But truly, the Word of God is a life, listen, of obedience and surrendering to God. Just... just Doing what God tells you to do. I'm going to give you an example. I don't know, it was four or five years ago, uh, we went on a mission trip here to uh, the Indian Reservation to build a church. You guys remember that? We raised money to build a church on the Indian Reservation out in uh, Montana. I think it was right out of uh, the city of... Billings, Montana, it was on an Indian reservation, so uh, there were some churches to come together, and we were part of that, and uh, we went out there for about a week, and we built the church. Well, it was time for everybody to come out, and I thought, well, I'll take a two or three uh, days vacation, and I'll just stay out there and ride around and look at the scenery and stuff, and had a great time. I stayed at, uh, I stayed at this motel in Billings, Montana, and then I, then I would ride into... Uh, Cody, Wyoming. It was a, just a beautiful town there. So I stayed in a, I stayed in a motel there in Billings, uh, Montana. Now, we've done, uh, built this beautiful church on the Indian Reservation. How many of you know you, you're doing what you feel like God's telling you to do? Amen. I feel like this is what God's telling us to do, so we're, we're, we're doing that. Feel good about it. Feel good about it. I wake up in the middle of the night just out of a dead sleep. And uh, I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, you need to prepare yourself to do video. And I'm telling you, I said, there is no way, God. So three or four months later, the Lord just kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, you need to prepare and just to do video. Well, I'm thinking, I don't want no part of that. Zippo, zippo, zippo. 
I said, there's a lot of other pastors and preachers out there on video. I, I don't got no desire whatsoever to do that. And God, I'm just, I'm not doing it. You ever told God you weren't going to do something? I kept, sh I kept shoving it behind and shoving it behind, saying, I'm not going to do it. Then God would speak something else, and I would be obedient to that, but I wouldn't be obedient to this. And just because I was obedient to this doesn't mean that I was being obedient to that. See, we like to pick and choose what we're obedient to. So the Lord just tapped me on the shoulder the other day and said, now you're trying to play catch up. Now you're trying to figure all this stuff out. What if you would have just Listen to me, five years ago, you would have been prepared now. God knows what you're going to face a year down the road. He knows what you're going to face three years down the road. He knows what you're going to face five years down the road. And if God wants to fulfill you, if God is going to fulfill your destiny and your purpose in your life, then you're going to have to be obedient to him. If you're going to eat the good of the land, then you're going to have to be obedient to what God is speaking because God knows what's going on in your life way down the road. So we're to live a life of feeding on the word and obeying the word of God. Second, quickly, a true disciple follows the Holy Spirit. A true disciple follows the voice of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, John chapter 14, 16 says, and I'll pray the Father and he'll give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Say that with me, forever. How long is he going to abide with us? Forever. How long? Forever. The word another there means same as of. Uh. Like if I'd eat a barbecue sandwich and I say, you know, I like a barbecue sandwich. I want one just like the one you just gave me, another one. This word here means another, that I'm sending the Holy Spirit another. Isn't it great to know that just like the disciples walked with Jesus, he sent the Holy Spirit to you and I, which was another that as I'm walking with the Holy Spirit every day of my life, it's just like me walking with Jesus, just like the disciples walked with Jesus. I'm walking with the Holy Spirit daily. Now, we can get excited about that. How many of you like me have said, I wish I could have walked with Jesus on earth just one day? How many of you said that? I've said that before, Pastor John. Man, wouldn't it have been cool just to hang out with Jesus for one day? We get to do that every day. Because he said, I'm sending you another. And the Holy Spirit is just like you and I walking with Jesus. A true disciple follows the leading of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was on earth, some got healed, some got delivered, some got fed, some got restored, some got rescued from the storm. But some became a disciple of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, listen to this, Pentecostals, the Holy Spirit is more than oil. He's more than laying on of hands. He's more than running up and down a church aisle. He's more than just speaking in tongues. He's more than shaking. He's more than jumping. Those things are manifestations to you and I that happen in our life at times, in times of the church. But the Holy Spirit is another, that he walks with us day by day. I mean, I get to just hang out with the Holy Spirit. If something's going wrong in my life, I just get to just to hang out with the Holy Spirit and talk to the Holy Spirit, and he's with me. The disciples very seldom ever left the side of Jesus, right? Right? And there was a reason for that. I get to hang out with the Holy Spirit every day. I can get a cup of coffee and 
I can walk outside and I can just talk to the Holy Spirit. He wants you and I to have a relationship with Him just like that. You're working during the day and things are not going good. You just talk to the Holy Spirit about it. And He's right there with you. Speaking to you. It's an, it's an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. I, I just once again read the life of the disciples as they walked with Jesus in their difficulties in their life. And they, they talked to Christ about it. But if you don't have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, if you don't have that closeness with the Holy Spirit to hear His, to hear His voice, John chapter 15 verse 14 put it like this, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Here's obedience back in the picture again. You're my friends if you do whatever I command you. One thing to read the word of God. One thing to abide in the word of God. But he said in John chapter 15. You are my disciples or you are my friends if you do what? If you do whatever I command you to do. Jesus has that right to command us to do things. Friendship with the Holy Spirit is not much it's not based on fellowship i mean excuse, excuse me friend, uh, fellowship friendship with the holy spirit is based on obedience when he says to turn right do you turn right when he turns says to turn left you turn left when he says to go forward you go forward when he says to turn one way or another you are turning that way in my life in my life i've always walked around and said holy spirit speak to me this last week, my prayer has changed. Holy Spirit, when you speak to me, help me to do what you've asked me to do. Because if I have a, 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 an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, he's going to speak to me, isn't he? Is he not going to speak to me? Uh, but I have trouble following his commands. I have trouble at times doing what he asked me to do. How about you? If I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Second of all, third of all, a true disciple forsakes that which hinders them following Christ. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, put it this way. When Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. There's that word again. Let him deny himself to come and follow me. Discipleship is not so much about discipline than it is about devotion. I have, in my own life, I have been caught up in the do's and the don'ts. Kevin, discipline yourself to do the do's and the don'ts. It's not about the do's and the don'ts. If I am a devoted disciple of Jesus Christ, I'm not going to want to do this. And I'm going to want to do that. If I am a full follower of Jesus Christ. Your follow will decide your forsaking. Let me read that again. Your follow will decide your forsaking. If you're truly following Christ, if you're truly devoted to Christ, then there are things that you will lay down. There are things that you will forsake. If you're truly following Christ, you realize I cannot talk like that anymore. If I'm truly a follower of Jesus Christ and a disciple of Jesus Christ, and I'm fully devoted to Jesus Christ, then I'm not going to post that on Facebook anymore. I'm not going to get angry like that anymore. I'm not going to hold grudges 
like that anymore. I'm not going to keep unforgiveness in my heart anymore. I'm not going to send pictures like that on Instagram anymore. I'm not going to post video that I shouldn't be posting on YouTube like that anymore. If I am a devoted follower of Jesus Christ, then I'm going to forsake the things that keep me from being devoted to Jesus Christ. I'm going to automatically forsake those. I'm going to have it in my heart to not to want to do those things if I'm a true follower of Jesus Christ. When you're a true follower of Jesus Christ, your following will dictate, dictate excuse me, your forsaking. Your goal is not to forsake. Your goal is to follow. If you're a true follower of Christ, then you will forsake the things he is asking you to forsake and lay down. Jesus is telling his disciples in Matthew chapter 16, if you're truly going to be one of my disciples, you're going to have to take up your own cross and follow me. Meaning you're going to have to die to your worldly lust, your worldly emotions, your worldly craving of this life. Yeah, I think one of the things in all of this that's been going on in our world, I've been hearing Christians say these words, I have my rights. I'm an American. I live in the United States of America, so I have my rights. But if you truly are a Born again Christian, if you truly are a disciple of Jesus Christ, no, you don't. The Bible says we're not of this world. We're just a passing through. We're of the kingdom of God. Jesus is the king. We're under the lordship of Christ. So I just don't have a right to say whatever I want to say. Come on, it's getting quiet in here. I don't have a right just to post anything I want to post. I don't have a right to talk about people just any way I want to talk about them. If I'm truly a born-again Christian and a disciple of Jesus Christ, then I'm going to have to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He has my right. He owns rights to me. I don't own rights to me. He owns the rights to me, Pastor John. He he owns me if I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Let me close with this. Many followed him from a distance. He still healed them. He still casted out demons. He still healed the lame man. He still healed the lepers. People followed him from a distance. But there were 12 that followed him close. Do I have rights? Only the rights through the kingdom of God. I'm going to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Then I'm going to have to deny myself. And take up my cross and follow him. Let's say that together. If I'm going to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to take up my cross and I'm going to follow him. Pastor, what is my cross? And I'm ending with this. I just mentioned it a couple, a couple minutes ago. My cross is wanting to do it my way. My cross is... Letting my emotions get all out of hand and saying whatever I want to say and whatever I want to do as a Christian. My cross is being obedient to whatever God tells me to do, whatever it is. It may not be easy, it may not be fun, but if He speaks to it in my spirit, I better be obedient to it. 
My cross is saying, I don't, I don't want to do that, God. I don't, I don't want to obey. I, I want my feelings and I want my ways and I want my ambitions and I want, I want to say that and I want to do that. But God says to take up your cross and follow me is to live, live under my lordship and what I am asking you to do. Take up your cross. The next time you think about Saying something, doing something, posting something. Next time you feel like the Holy Spirit taps on your shoulder, remember, I'm a child of the King. And for me to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, I've got to take up my cross. How many of you know a cross is not a pretty thing? How many of you know over 2,000 years ago, ago, he took up his cross? So you and I, you walk in the freedom and take up our cross and follow him. Let's stand. Father, we thank you today. Uh, We're asking you, Lord, that you will give us the strength through the Holy Spirit to abide in your word. You will give us the strength to take up our cross and deny ourself and follow you. By video, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior, I don't like to close out any, any church service without asking you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, Savior, Master, and King. The greatest decision you could ever make is to come and follow Jesus Christ. I want everyone else to here in the building to pray this prayer uh, with me. Say, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I confess all of my sins. I ask you to come and wash me and cleanse me And forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And if you prayed prayed that prayer and you meant it in your heart, you're saved this morning. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Pray for your... Continually pray, church, for your family. Pray for other church members. Pray for our children, protection. Uh, can I talk to you just a second, and we're going we're gonna to get out of here. God bless you. God bless you. I want to mention, mention this before we leave. Uh, I, uh, just let me be a pastor just for two minutes, and I'm going to let you get out of here. Uh, I text the leadership uh, this morning. Uh, As we see things unfolding in our world like we've never seen before. I was talking to my mom the other day and talking to another gentleman. I said, have you seen anything? My mom's almost, I think she's 79 years old. Have you seen anything like this? And she said, son, I've, I've never experienced what's going on right now. I do not know when Jesus is coming back. I would be afraid to put some date on it. But I feel in my spirit that we're living in the last days. How many of you know that the the devil is slick? If you're breathing and you're Christian, you know that. The devil is doing everything within his power A lot of churches still are not having church We still can't have but so many With people being out of church and not coming to the house of God Fellowshipping 
Let's not allow, and there's ones that can't come for re- other reasons, and that's, that's fine, and that's okay. But let's make sure that the enemy doesn't slip in during that time, that we can't gather a lot together, and think that the devil can use that time to kind of to kind of lull us, bring, bring us to kind of to sleep. You know how you're in the hospital and they put that IV in you and you start going, you okay for a while? And then that IV making you feel, you feel pretty good, right? And then you're gone. You're out of there. That's how the devil works, church. Yes. He puts an IV in you. He said, oh, yeah, it's okay. I didn't, didn't go to church. and maybe, maybe people can, and I understand that. But let's not be careful. Let's be very careful and make sure that we are in the Word of God, yes. that we are on our knees, and that we're listening to worship. And we're using that time, listen, to get closer to God, Instead of using everything that's going on as an excuse, it's how how many the first two or three weeks you said, "Oh wow, man, I don't have to go church Sunday. I can go back, turn over, and go back to sleep." How many you said that? Oh, I feel like Best John went. That felt pretty good. I got a couple snow days. I mean, I said that. I'm gonna be honest, as preacher. Man, I don't have to go preach this morning. This feels pretty good. A cup of coffee. I'll listen to somebody on the TV. This feels pretty good. But if we're not careful, the enemy will little by little by little by little spiritually put us to sleep. So I'm just encouraging you, please make sure you're spending time in the Word of God. You get alone with God and pray, and you worship God. And if we never... If we never had church again, you've got enough church inside of you. You've got enough Holy Ghost inside of you to make it to heaven. Amen. Amen. But it's up to you. You don't serve a preacher. You don't serve a building or some worship team. You serve the living God. Yes, amen. You stay connected to him because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. God bless you before I preach again.